All right, hello, wine-drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday, or what I drank yesterday, or, well, you know, just what I've been drinking here in the store. And we see a lot of suppliers. I'm always happy to see these small family-owned uh, wineries like Melville here. This wine's been family-owned and operated since, uh, well, it started in 1995, this label, but the family has been in the grape-growing business since the 80s. They owned vineyards in Napa and sold grapes and then decided, well, let's try our hand at making our own wine. And, uh, well, the South Central Coast is where they get most of their fruit for this label. The great Greg Brewer is the winemaker here from Brewer Clifton. And uh, this winery focuses on site-specific wines. Uh, all the wines are whole cluster pressed, all neutral oak, uh, no new oak, so they really want you to get the sense of terroir uh, or dirt where the wines are coming from here. So uh, this first wine we have is the Chardonnay Estate from Santa Rita Hills. Santa Rita Hills to me has this lovely distinction to it. It's a cold climate a region. It's the only area in California where the mountains range run east to west, so they get that cool influence from the ocean. It's actually cooler than most of the growing areas up far north of that, including Napa, Sonoma, Mendocino, because of this ocean influence. So you really notice uh, the bright uh, acidity in these wines. This wine's got a nice amount of fruit on the nose, tangerine, citrus, notes of fresh earth, that diatomaceous earth that they have there, that oceanic influence. The clay-based soils also, like I said, a, a really interesting, uh, distinct minerality coming to all these from all these wines from the Santa Rita Hills. Nice richness on the palate, but again, a firm underbelly of that acidity, making things fresh and vibrant through the finish. And uh, kind of kumquat, kumquat like citrus fruit, uh, leaves the tongue salivating for food. An excellent bottle, Santa Rita Hill Chardonnay, thirty dollars a bottle. Then the Pinot Noir Estate up next. This is the main estate Pinot made from sixteen different clones, and uh, all with different soil types. They like this complexity that it adds to the wine, adding these different clone types and the different soils. This wine's got a dark raspberry fruit with highlights of black tea spice and pretty floral aromas. 50% of the wine is whole cluster pressed here. No new barrels again. Like I said, these guys want you to really get the essence of the terroir here. Really fresh and spicy wine on the tongue with a sexy finish, that satiny, velvety texture we love about Pinot Noir. Some bright black raspberry fruit, brown spices, pretty floral notes. Lovely concentration of this wine. An excellent bottle of Pinot at $31.50. And then the Estate Syrah, uh, Verna's Vineyard from Santa Barbara. This vineyard is about 10 miles away from the Pinot Noir Vineyard, but uh, also all estate grown like all the wines are. More feminine style of Syrah, a little lighter on the palate, but still has some nice jammy fruit here, dark cherry and plum. Uh, hints of kind of dried meat, sausage notes on the nose, some dark cocoa spice, lavender, pretty floral notes. A really fresh and savory wine on the palate, showing that lovely dark berry fruit, but wonderful freshness and echoing some of that lavender and uh, floral notes on the finish along with a little peppery spice. Excellent juice. And then to finish up, a little Viognier, a white wine at the end. Well, this Viognier, uh, cold fermented and uh, also, you know, more on the savory side, Viognier can get to be a little heavy and clunky, oily, and just, uh, well, I don't like a lot of New World Viognier's for that reason. Uh, this one, though, a lovely freshness, 50% stainless steel, 50% barrel fermented in uh, oak, but uh, they do that for the uh, richness that they get from stirring up the leaves in there, uh, sandy soils. In this one, you get a lot of that white peach and lychee nut fruit, pretty white flowers, white pepper spice in this wine, a really nicely balanced bouquet, uh, nice solid core of ripe fruit on the palate, that peach and lychee nut fruit shining through a bit of spice, some pretty floral notes, uh, hibiscus flower, and that white pepper spice on the finish, but with wonderful balance, not thick and oily at all, really fresh on the finish. That's what I had to drink with the folks from Melville Winery. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the wine watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.